Okay, hi, this is our second podcast. Today we're looking at When We Two Parted by Lord Byron. Um, we might start off with structure this time. I think this structure is really interesting because it appears, it's a very, very regular uh, rhyme scheme and regular rhythm, although the first verse is slightly off, but the rest of it is very regular. And I wondered if people thought whether or not that means he's not too... Although the poem apparently is about him being really upset about a breakup, whether he actually maybe it isn't really a real emotion that he's conveying because he, the poem is so ordered. Yeah, and especially after we were talking um, last time about Barrett Browning's poem and how the metre kind of speeds up and that overwhelming emotion, it feels very controlled to the point of being slightly contrived. And, you know... Lord Byron, the famous womaniser, it sort of makes sense that he would be kind of performing <laughs> this sort of semblance of grief yeah. rather than feeling that genuine emotion. Yeah, I mean, I think the only times when potentially you could argue that there's genuine feelings of emotion is maybe when you've got the um, you of the dashes sometimes, mm. which don't seem necessary. In secret we met, and how should I greet thee? The, the dash is there, perhaps, but again, they're they're very. It's all very carefully constructed. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a stuttering, isn't there, with those? Or it could be perceived as a stuttering with those those hyphens and those dashes. Mm. But yeah, I think that that one you touched upon in the final stanza, in secret we met, in silence I grieve, a real mournfulness, and. You know, it, it is packed with a punch, but you could look at it the other way. There's a real lack of sincerity. It mm. is, like you were saying, performative. It's surface emotion. He's you know, outwardly suggesting, oh, my heart's breaking, my, you know, my, my world is ending. Mm. But then again, I, just, I, don't, I don't believe him. No. I, don't believe, I feel like the next day he could be writing a poem about his next affair. And is this something that's surface-level grief? Or is this truly something that's... That has struck a chord. I don't know. I think for me, there's more questions than answers with this mm. one. There's a little bit of bitterness there as well. Like when he says, Pale grew thy cheek and cold, that idea of like, you know, colder thy kiss, that coldness from her, that he feels that real kind of rejection from her. And then later in line 20, where he says, Why wert thou so dear? It's almost a little bit kind of sarcastic. Mm. You know, why did I ever kind of bother with you? Mm. Why was I saying? But so isn't, isn't there also, you know, that there's such a big emphasis on silence through the whole poem, so the repetition mm. of that word all the time. Is it actually perhaps the fact that he's had to keep quiet about it that's bothering him mm. more because than. Because of the public scandal. Yeah. Yeah. And this has been his kind of opportunity to speak out and kind of say what he feels yes. about this when all the publicity surrounding the affair would have meant that yeah. he perhaps... He's, he's scrolling through shot. Instagram and he's seeing all these pictures of Bay with someone else. <laughs> and he's at the point here where he's like, I, I can't take this anymore. And it is that sort of Bay. suffering in silence, you know? Suffering in silence because of, you know, he's, he's loved and lost or he's lusted and lost. Yes. Lusted? Lusted and lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And it is... It is kind of, you can't ignore the fact that it does seem to be some kind of unrequited mm. lust, even if it's not true love. Um, How do we know it's lust rather than love? Because of... I think it's, it's more the contextual stuff there. I suppose that's, that's our mm. accusations on yeah. all we know in Womanizer, old Byron. Um, maybe we have been a bit cheated then, if we know that and we're coming to the poem with yeah. that, that mm. knowledge. If you, if you saw this as an unseen poem in an exam you might think quite the opposite. So I suppose it does stress the significance of context and knowing yes. that and applying that in the exam for those extra six or so marks. Yeah, there's also the, the physical side of things, particularly in the first stanza just there, like uh, pale drew thy cheek and mm. colder thy kiss. So he's kind of, the things that he's noticing mm. or that he's kind of feeling the loss of are those kind of physical attributes. attributes. Yeah. Um, also, he does say half broken hearted. Yeah, he does say yeah. half broken hearted. That's Which true. It's quite an odd thing to say. You it's, know, it's definitely. I haven't you, given you my whole heart, but you yeah. had a little bit of it, and now I've got to take it back. When you, yes, when you think about the. Sorry, it's no, fine, but I, I, I'm just going to yeah, say sure. when you think about the poem that we did before, where she's so clearly all consumed mm -hmm. with love. Um, this one is a lot less enthusiastic, isn't it? Mm. I know, but maybe he is just one half of what yeah. used to be, you know. He definitely sees like himself as the mm -hmm. victim. So if he's sort of saying, oh, I was 
the half that was broken hearted oh, in that yeah. relationship. I mean, that thy vows are all broken. Yeah. There's no reference to him having in any way let her down. No, mm-hmm. that's true. But any references to the first person are just full of wallowing sadness. You know, it's okay, yeah, you've done this. You're, you're the issue here, you're the problem. But look at what I feel now, line 12. Um, when I hear that name spoken, line 15, mm. uh, in silence, I grieve. Like, mm. It's all about like him. such a victim, yeah. 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 And again, I, guess, I suppose if we're thinking about the, the context, again, we're looking at a Victorian poet writing in a very male-dominated mm. society. There's that self-centeredness. And um, perhaps the idea that this woman has rejected him is yes. more than it's just a heartbreak. How dare she? Yeah. 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 Dignity. And he doesn't like, because I mean, that line there, line 14, and light is thy fame... Like he's he's annoyed at the fact that she's got notoriety and perhaps mm-hmm. it's like almost you know that mm-hmm. idea that he loved the publicity yes mm-hmm. yeah she's got the limelight and he hasn't. So if we're, if we're thinking about the broader themes here, we've got this idea of grief, we've got his anger, we've got his regret. Mm. Um, there's not too much that we can take away from this where we can say, oh Lord Byron, what a stand-up chap he was. No. <laughs> it, 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 does, it does seem like even though we were long, long shall I rue thee it's almost quite childish but Rue's, but Rue's I'm going to remember this for a really long, yeah. long time just yeah. so you know but Rue's also a really interesting word because it's 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 about regret rather mm. than, it's not about he, he's, it's, it's saying I regret ever having done it rather than I wish I'd never I met were, you yeah, yeah it's, it's, not, it's not really I'm going to miss you mm. yeah. although I suppose he is a gentleman at the end because he doesn't actually tell yeah, it keeps it, it keeps it. There's some nice stuff throughout the poem which links to that idea of that shushing it and keeping it quiet. There's some stuff like yeah. the alliteration on line 16 and sharing its shame. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Shudder. Yeah. There's. Yeah. There is that. You know, we must keep this quiet. Or maybe that was the thrill of the excitement with the affair. You know, mm. the, the the quietness, etc. Uh, and then at the very end of the t- very end of the poem, that silence and tears yeah. lingering yeah. sound. The sibilance. So that yeah, and that runs right the way through it. it. Does. But he accuses her quite a lot as well, and he's angry with her. So we have like true grief because mm. we, uh, you know, we, we think that maybe his feelings are not genuine because he's quite in con- like uh, the poem seems to be quite irregular. But that is the only thing that he's in control of, like the rhymes. He's not in control of his relationship anymore, but he's going through different stages of grief. Mm. So we have the denial. He's past that. Now, now we have anger, and then he will move on to to sorrow. So I think I think he's genuine. Mm. I think there's like I said, there's, there's that suffering in silence on his own. He's going through those stages, but mm. there's another thing that's really angering him, and it's in that third stanza where it's talking about hearing other people talking yeah. about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And you know, his silence then contrasting with all that gossip. Mm. Quite a sort of powerful image. Mm. Uh, building up to that because it's like a double yeah. blow like this, she yeah. describes her name as a knell in my ear so like, mm. a, yeah. funeral like a funeral yeah. mm. image a bit like Miss Roberts' voice when she's delivering things to the class that knell that annoyance <laughs> that, oh, that droning monotony thank that you <laughs> But it's, it's, it's a good one. I think if we're thinking about comparisons to other poems as well, yeah. of course we've got the one that we looked at last week and we've got the completely contrasting um, outlooks and feelings mm. towards love. I mean, sometimes when you're picking the poems, it is quite interesting to compare a poem to one that is so contrasting in emotion yeah. because you've got that breadth of, of things to talk about. My class, when we did, when we two-parted, we looked at um, Love's Philosophy at a similar mm-hmm. time, and we were sort of talking about, you know, understanding the contextual knowledge that Percy Bysshe Shelley was sort of happily married while Lord Byron remained single throughout his life, and we sort of talked about, you know, perhaps Love's Philosophy being a slightly more genuine sense mm. of um, love than the when we two-parted. Uh, go back to, like, what... Um, Miss Stabner was saying about the idea of um, the control that he has in terms of the rhyme mm. and, um, and the kind of the rhythm created in those stanzas. Um, I think you know again that just that just gets across that idea that he knows exactly what he wants yeah, to say. Yeah, mm-hmm. And so I'd be tempted to look for a poem which was kind of 
structured in a very different way, mm. maybe more of a kind of free verse feel, mm. because then that where the feelings were more spontaneous. Or yeah, or, or a poem where the, the, the rhyme and rhythm are broken up more, so you can see that the, the poet's yeah. not so in control of their feelings. Mm. Yeah, like at the end of yeah. The Farmer's Bride, it all yeah. kind of breaks down when he loses control. They mm. both part as well, don't they? They both part, physically part. Yeah. yeah. Break up poems. Okay, well, I think again that's another little 10 minute uh, foray into the world of Lord Byron just there. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll have some more analytical treats for our dear English learners. <laughs> <laughs>